Uh, it's actually my mom, but it's it's okay, it's fine. Uh, so I think that we can go directly to a short round of introductions. I will ask you to please uh, give your name, your organization, where you are at, the, at this moment, uh, or where do you live normally, and one word, free association word, that you associate feminized, feminization of politics to. So, for example, I would go and then I would give the floor to, to the rest. Uh, my name is Vera. I am project manager in Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung in Madrid. Um, uh, for me, feminization of politics uh, means real democracy. So, I will go now to Senia. Okay, I didn't have time to think about the word. Did you say <laughs> You can pass off it if you uh, want. Uh, okay, so hi everyone, my name is Ksenia. I live in Belgrade and work in Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung in Belgrade office. But we, our office is um, um, actually working in the whole region. Uh, and yeah, the first word that came, came up to my mind is solidarity, like radical solidarity. So should I uh, give words to someone else? We go like this or? No, I will, I will. Thank okay. you, Ksenia. Okay. <laughs> Alex. Ah, hi, um, I'm Alex. I'm working for the foundation in the program Global Feminism. And I'm currently in the south of Germany, but um, normally I'm in Buenos Aires. And uh, the word is, um like horizontality i think is that the word <laughs> thanks irene okay. hi i'm irene i i'm one of the authors of the report of feminist politics now uh, and uh, actually uh, i'm 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 in madrid and if i have to choose one word i will say I will say friends because this all this experience of working with a lot of amazing women from everywhere around the world in this municipalism and feminism project has brought me friends beyond activism. So that's the word I, I would choose. Yeah. Thank you, Irene. Uh, Dorit and Johanna. Mm, hello, I'm Johanna and I'm the <clears throat> head of the European unit and I live and work in Berlin if I'm not visiting one of the 10 offices which was hard in the last months but usually I do a lot and I don't have a word I have a sentence um, uh, feminization of politics mean to me that I might get rid of a lot of things which drive me crazy all day long good thanks Hello everybody, I'm Dorit and we are currently in the office here in Berlin on Franz Meringplatz, where the headquarter of the foundation is. I'm living in Dresden and I'm a project manager in Rosa Luxemburg Foundation and I would choose the word um, non-competition. Cool. Thanks. Uh, Frau Ada Regelmann, bitte. Hi. Um, I'm Ada from RLS in Brussels, uh, and I'm currently in the office. I escaped my home, where I was in home office, to uh, be undisturbed <laughs> by my family. Um, <laughs> but actually, the word that comes to mind are the words, and it's a bit of a cheat, because it's two words, is uh, bringing care into democracy. Thank you, Ada. Chris? Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Cristiani. I'm Cristiani Gomez from the Office of the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation in Brazil. Um, I live in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. Um, I'm one of the worst countries to be right now is Brazil. And, uh, and the word, actually, two words. 
um, transformation and intersectionality. And Seren is here too. Mamãe, <laughs> mamãe, <laughs> Say hi. Mamãe, <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Barbara, bitte. Yeah, hi, I'm Barbara. Um, I work in the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation Berlin office um, in the Institute for Social Analysis. And um, there are so many things that have been said, so I'm saying uh, equal access. Thank you very much. Viliana, please. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Viliana Georgi. Um, I'm here in front of Nedavimu Belgrade, uh, down by Belgrade now, uh, from Belgrade, working from home today. Um, my word would usually be democracy, participatory democracy, but um, I'll just say equality because it's also an element of democracy, essential to me, so equality. Thank you very much. Kayo now, please. Hi, I'm Kajo Tetzler from Die Linke Party in Berlin. I'm at the very moment in my garden, as you can see in my background. And, uh, <laughs> um, well, you just said equality. That was also what came to my mind. And I, I thought about finding ways of encountering uh, male-dominated behavior, maybe also. Perfect. Katharina? Hi, I'm Katharina Pühl. I work as well as in the Institute for Social Research in uh, uh, Berlin. I, I'm a colleague of Barbara and um, in, I live and work in Berlin. So, <laughs> And I have three words to share, decolonization and Black Lives Matter and queer feminist materialism. Thank you. I'm happy to join and to see you all. Thank you, Katharina. <laughs> Kerstin, bitte. Hello everyone, I'm Kerstin. I'm uh, from the Left Party also in Germany and I work there for the chairwoman Katja Kipping and I live in Berlin. I'm also at home office right now and uh, I like all your words and I will just say change. Thank you for that. Angela. Uh, hi, I'm Angela Rojic. I hope you can hear me because I have really problems with internet connection right now. And ah. I have problems to hear you all. Yeah, I, I wrote They're that, but I don't know what's Angela. happening. It's one Angela and one Angela. So it's great. Hey, that yes, yes. You are just sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, please. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, so I have really big problems now with the internet, but I hope I will be able to, to participate in this. Anyway, I'm from organization Edalimo Beograd from Belgrade, and I live and work in Belgrade as well as Vienna. Uh, so I would choose the word empathy. Great, thanks. Now the other Angela. Hello, I'm Angela from uh, the RLS uh, office in Berlin and I'm program coordinator in the Latin American department and my word is powerful transformation. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now we go to Ale. Hi. Uh, all, I'm really happy to be here. Um, I, I live in Madrid. I'm one of the authors of the of the report, and I'm at, at my home. <laughs> and uh, for me, feminization of politics is uh, collective intelligence. Great. We go to Laura. Hello, I'm Laura Roth. I'm also one of the co-authors. I live in the Basque country, in a small town called Aya. And uh, to me, feminization of politics is connected to interdependence. Great. And I would love to listen to Flor. 
I don't know if it's possible. I don't think so, no? Yes, yes, it is. I, ah, I hear cool. you all very well. I'm sorry, but I don't know why, but my camera doesn't work. Uh, I can see you all, and I'm very happy to see you. I would like you to see me too, but yes, I don't know course. how to do it. <laughs> um, well, um, you just said, well, I work in, in Buenos Aires office as a project manager. And I live here also. I'm in my home, in my home now because that's the way things are now. And I, you just said all the words I would like to to say and to talk about here. But I think that it has to do with the desire to to change everything that that we had as feminists and and also politics uh, has to do with that and feminization of politics. It's it's everything that we want. Mm -hmm. Okay, last but not least, I would like to introduce Alex and Maria. Maria is taking some notes and maybe doing some um, kind of communicative work for us. She is in the Basque Country as well, and um, she will be you know, writing a small note for the website and sharing it with you afterwards. So she's here like a observer, but she knows a lot about this matter. So please feel free to jump in whenever you feel like Maria, please. <laughs> and Alex uh, in Brussels, she is the PR manager uh, and she's in charge not only of the technical stuff behind the scenes right now, but also behind the publication itself the layouting, the editing, and she's of course being one of the protagonists of the of the of the whole thing. So I will directly turn the leave the floor to Laura, Ale, and Irene. Thank you. Okay, so it's my turn. Uh, first of all, we would like to make a super brief introduction on the on the political framework and the background of this project of this report. So let me share. This is the, 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 that uncomfortable moment in every video conference when you share the screen and it doesn't work, but let's hope it does. <laughs> so let me share. Okay. Is it working? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, as I said, I would like to, to, to tell you a bit more about uh, the framework in which uh, all this project uh, was born and, and in the, at the stage we are, we are now. So, which is the starting point, as you can see in this, in this map. Uh, we were a group of six uh, different municipalist organizations from different places in Europe who joined forces in 2018. And uh, thanks to a grant that we received by, by Foundation, a participatory fund, uh, we were able to to establish a, a series of, of meetings and, uh, and workshops to develop a methodology on feminization of politics. I'm not going to tell you which, what do we mean by feminization of politics because uh, I will give that, uh, that word to, to Laura, who is the, the real expert on, on this field. But uh, the, the, the interesting point of this, of this, of this, of this, the way we started working together is that um, Despite uh, all the, the, the huge difference among these organizations, because you have, for example, I don't know, a difference not only in the size, but in the, the way they, they reach political approaches, the, the, the way the, the, the agreements that, they, they, that led to the, the building of these platforms, uh, we were able to, to reach common grounds on political actions. And you, as you can see in, the, in, this, in this map, you have, I don't know, for example, La Silo Massa Critica in Napoli, which is a, a social center, which is working on politics uh, by, by empowering the city through culture and arts. And then you have, for example, Barcelona in Comune in Barcelona, who is, uh, is, the, is, is currently the, the, rallying, the ruling party in the, in, the, in, the, in the city town, in the town hall. So, so you have a, a, a very different uh, background for, from each organization, but we were able to face uh, to find common grounds and to work together. Uh, so during from 2008 till now, till nowadays, because we are still alive, this feminist feminization of politics uh, project uh, has been has been working, and uh, this report was one step be one step. Um, and more on the on the on the procedure. Thanks thanks to to Rosa Luxemburg Foundation and Vera, uh, we were able to to let's let's say to broaden to to broaden the focus and to 
bring all the things that we have been learning and working together in this, uh, with this, within these six uh, sister organizations and to invite 10 organizations more. We, we interviewed people from all around the world, uh, trying to understand why, what, do we, what do they understood as a fem feminization of politics within the, the, the municipalist framework. Of course, not everybody is, is here in this, in, in this report because uh, we, we wanted to, to reflect the diversity of organizations, but of course the, the, the willingness of the organization, the times were not adjusted, so we, 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 we were able to, to have some people participating, some other not. For example, we are missing the, the, Kurdish, the, Kurd, the Kurds, the, the Kurdistan people in this, in this project, and, and we said so in the report, for example. But at the same time, we were able to, to interview and to meet people from a very small projects, municipalist projects, who hadn't had the floor to, to speak before. So, Irene, let me let me just uh, interrupt you for a second. If you could speak slower. Ah uh, yes, sure. That, that that's that's one of my problems. Thank you. In other fields in my life, to, to be honest. So yeah, okay. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know if, if all of you have read this uh, this report. This is very it's very long, and as Vera said, it's not very academic. It's much more focused on practice and focused on the uh, how we 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 were able to to find these common problems and to be able to identify them as as problems themselves, and which solutions uh, we will find uh, feasible to 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 implement. Some of them have been already successful. Uh, tools uh, uh, implemented in many cities and in many organizations. Some others have been just suggestions and some others have been failures because we also learn from failures. So uh, uh, I, I, we wrote here one of the quotes uh, that one of the participants in the debate said, we, because we want not only affect the what we do, but also how we engage in activism. And that was maybe one of the, of the main, of the main uh, uh, let's say goals we had in mind when, when working on for, in all of this uh, together. So uh, basically, why municipalism and why feminization? Okay, we understood municipalism as a tool for radical democracy and transformation. Why? Because uh, new municipalism, and at in, in, at in this time, I would like to thank the, the contributions from many authors and experts on this field. Uh, for example, we have Laura, Laura Roth here, who for me was one of the persons who from from whom I've learned more about this uh, this field, but we have Bertie Russell, we have um, uh, uh, Susan Wainwright, we have a lot of people who has uh, 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 provided a lot of information for this report. But being very brief and just bringing some 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 brief points on the on the topic, we understood new municipalism uh, that as a, as a, as a way to to. For, for radical democracy and for transformation in this context of economic crisis, of austerity, of the rise of extreme, extreme right discourses, because it builds power from the bottom up, as, 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 as we said. It's, it's, uh, it, it reflects the diversity of the local political landscape and is able to, to, be op uh, to, to create open uh, and participatory decision-making processes and be able to, to reflect that diversity. Uh, it also re reflects the diverse, the, as, as I said, the diverse sensitivity, sensitivity sorry, of the immediate social and political ecosystem. And this sense of subsidiarity, let's say, is a tool for transformation because municipalism is not just the lowest step of state administration and so, sometimes understood as, as, as it, but it's an open space for self-government. For self At the same time, uh, instead of understanding, uh, let's say, the, this... Um, the, 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 the frame of the, of the state nation, which is in fact a very masculine way of understanding politics, uh, as the only frame possible to, to, to build leftist projects, uh, we, we, within municipalism we are able to, to find that, that, uh, that, that, that power of diversity and, 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 and escape from many masculine ways of, male, male ways of, of understanding how power uh, is exercised, as Alejandra and, and Laura will also explain you explain you later. And at the same time, municipalism is the perfect arena to practice feminism. Why? Because uh, this way of working uh, through the relational, the everyday works, the everyday challenges faced together are a way of, of, of understanding how, how we, 
we have we build relationships with with each other in in in, in other level. And as I said before, one of the limits of national political projects as, as is that phobia to disagreement and that very male sense of, of exercising power. And we through intersectionality and diversity in the municipalist level, we empower that diversity and we empower that project. Of, and of course, because sometimes it's in this local realm where many of the feminist critics that have been done to, the, to liberal democracy can be landed, can be reflected, can be can be touched and felt. And with this uh, COVID-19 crisis, we have we have been uh, very very conscious on that. Now, how the, the local, the, the, which is close to us, is also uh, is it, and, and how it how, how it works and how liberal politics are exercised there can be somehow challenged by these feminist ways of doing. Another another one another point of this uh, feminist approach to municipalization is that we are learning by doing. That that is, as if, if you work on public policies uh, towards gender and equality, as I do, you know that many of the things that we have theorized and that we have discussed are hadn't even been yet implemented. But but this way of learning by doing step by step, making mistakes, learning from those mistakes, going back and then and then starting again is a very interesting way of building these narratives narratives on, on, on what is common for us and 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 and, and working on you know, different ways of. Uh, empowering people through the through the local through the local uh, structures and 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 challenging as I and, and, and says in the in this slide the artificial division between what is personal and what is uh, political. So as I said before, if we, if we six different organizations from six different countries with many different with, with, with backgrounds completely different and situations completely different were able to face these uh, common challenges together here you can see that we, we at the end in this in the report we chose to to focus on these eight uh, seven sorry seven like uh, let's say key issues or key challenges because it was a very hard work to 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 take uh, everything that was discussed and, and trying to to concentrate it in in in, in these uh, specific points, um, uh, we we at the end at the end what, what what we wrote up with this report was the the, the way of uh, of how to uh, feminize as Laura will explain now how to feminize this municipalist. Uh, Potential uh, on, on, and, and this and this political shift on, on the way we understand uh, how progressive and left pro politics can be done, and also at the same time I think think of thinking it was very interesting to think of uh, building tools together, tools that can be adapted to many to to, to the very deep, diverse and very different contexts. So uh, as, as I said before, feminism is included in the municipalist agenda. But the meaning of feminization of politics is still to be discussed and is still to be to be thought and needs a collective reflection. And I would like to give floor to, to Laura because she's the one that she's going to explain you the way we have been also discussing this, this core point of, of the report. So Laura. Thank you. And Before Laura starts, sorry, Laura, to, uh, yeah. to interrupt you. Uh, if you have any questions, any suggestions, any feedback, anything, please uh, go to the chat and post them there because we will be looking at it and then facilitate a Q and A moment. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Thank you for for reminding us of that. Um, uh, so um, yeah. So now that the the, the idea is to discuss a little bit about what feminization of politics um, means. Um, so, Irene, if you can change to the next um, slide. I would, I would like to start by, by saying what it is not. Uh, some of these things are, of course, in the report, and if you read it, you, if you read it, you probably know it. But um, so as we see it, it's not simply a struggle for mere um, gender equality. It goes far beyond that, although it includes uh, a struggle for more uh, gender equality and gender balance in every aspect, not, not only in like positions of responsibility, but also in, 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 in every kind of uh, responsibility and and so on uh, so it's not an attempt to promote feminine traits as such that's something that you probably agree with it's quite obvious but some people 
when we say the word feminization of politics, they, they tend to associate it with that. So it's not, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about women acting like men either and about this liberal feminist idea of uh, like having a seat at the table. That's not, um, that's also not what we, what we mean with feminization of politics. It's not simply about having more women, having the resources and the power that the men have. Um, so next slide, Irene. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I cannot intervene. <laughs> um, so why then insist on the term feminization and not talking about not not to talk? Why are why are aren't we talking about feministization or depatriarchalization? One of the things that we say in the report is it's very important. We at least us we cannot pronounce those words, so that's a very important reason. I cannot say depatriarchalization de and in a conversation. Um, but then also there are reasons why why it makes sense to keep that idea in mind. So the first one is that, as you know, in social role theory has taught us taught us there, there are differences in the way our societies understand our roles, although those roles are socially constructed, there are benefits and, and penalizations that are uh, distributed in society according to those roles. So that's important and, and, and also neuroscience uh, tells us a lot about how uh, our brains work, although recent studies show that we are, uh, we are like a mosaic instead of like female or, or male, but it's still, those difference, differences um, are still relevant and, and, and how we uh, distribute privileges in society according to our traits and our roles is, is still relevant. And so to some extent, we think that although uh, um, we cannot simply redistribute separated into into men and women in the world and, and identify privileges according to that uh, it still makes sense to, to claim that men should adapt to, to ways of doing that are um, more um, more common among men and why why we say that because those ways of doing are are on the uh, in the first place things that we want to defend they are they're valuable like cooperation and care and other things even they are if they are a product of socialization and and also because it's fair so to find a, a better balance between how we distribute responsibilities and so on and this is a clarification this doesn't as i was saying before this is this doesn't require a binary conception of just gender and it doesn't require idealizing feminine traits either but this is a longer conversation um so Irene next slide okay um yeah so basically what we discuss in the report and and in the conversation we are interested in is that we want to change the, the forms of politics and not only the outcomes of politics and yeah next one uh, so the basis of the approach are care and relations. We, we think that um, it's important to pay attention to care, not only to care work, but also uh, to approach this from a conception of the ethics of care and how we cannot, um, we cannot hide the relationships that we depend on for living and we cannot hide the, the importance of taking care of relationships in the same way as we cannot hide uh, the relevance of care work for the sustainability of pro production, for instance. Uh, so one of the aims of this conception of politics is to nurture and to cultivate those relationships and not simply the outcomes and the projects that we, that we do to get. So next one. And then a few things about what feminization of politics is for us. It's a struggle against privilege. It's not, um, as I was saying, uh, not a struggle between men and women, of course, but it's a, a struggle against any kind of privilege. It's a shift in priorities in politics from, uh, for instance, uh, focusing on, on the aims of politics and the substantive part of politics, public policies and, and achieving what we want to achieve and also the, the forms of politics and how we get there and paying attention to times, to priorities and so on. Um, uh, then it's a cross-cutting issue or it should be a cross-cutting issue. 
Um, this doesn't mean that it should be diluted in any, any other topic, but it, it should affect every dimension of politics. And then finally, it's um, and what we are going to talk about uh, later is it's it is a change in structures, relationships, language, and times of politics among among many other things. So it it means going to to all the aspects of what we do together and how we do, do how we do things together. Um, and I will leave it here. Um, so, um, yeah, just one, one second. Um, yeah, I don't know, um, Vera, if, if there's any questions or... We can't hear you. There was just one question by Alex saying, why uh, did you or we choose those three, uh, the, the three topics that we are going to speak about? And maybe we can take this um, again, Laura, to, to speak about why care is for us meaning something else. I think this is a great question actually, to actually, you know, uh, continue to, to frame what, what do you think uh, feminization of politics is at the end of the day. Yeah, so I would say, and please add in, Eden, if you if you think there's anything missing. So, so the idea we discussed about how to approach this. Of course, time was a, a limitation, and we needed to do something. So, where where did we want to start? Uh, we connected that to to which of the topics were probably the ones least discussed in the feminist political discussions. Um, I don't know, things like care as, as care work, for instance, is something very common uh, or thing that in participation, although they are not always implemented, they are also common intersectionality is also usually a, an issue, although it's not fully implemented and so on. So we wanted to, to address the issues that, that were sort of more clearly going to the, to, the, to the core of the problem, let's say, to, the, to uh, like power and leadership are like the, the key, seem to be the key um, challenges in, in feminizing politics. So we wanted to start there, or, although of course all the issues are connected and, and so on. And why care? Because it's, so on the one hand, we wanted to shift from the view of care as simply care work, uh, connected to taking care of dependent beings and, and, um, and so on. And we wanted to introduce care, also care in relations and, and care of relations as, as the, the thing that allows us to sustain political projects and to and to do politics differently, um, and also well, and also care of people as something that that is necessary for a happy life. Um, so um, uh, we thought it made sense to approach difficult issues as, such as power or leadership from a point of view that is very different from the one that that is usually mainstream. Um, so yeah i would say that i don't know if i'm missing something no i would add that the uh, the importance of care as an intersectional uh, issue uh, when we started in 2018 we and we we started discussing this in different workshops we, we realized that we were all the time speaking about care and the need of care in, when, when touching all the different realms, always care was in the core. But at the same time, we always put it forward, put it back, like, yeah, well, we will discuss this later. We will discuss this later. And we never discuss it. So we decided, okay, let's make care, like the intersectional, the, the focus that will be always next to us, like, you know, uh, inspiring the rest of the actions we are, we are developing. And I think that we, somehow we were like, uh, uh, we made a, a, a right approach because nowadays we, we, we see that care is now starting to be a word that like we are listening more and more on the, on the, on the institutional and the political agendas. We are now listening and reading about a care deal in the EU. We are now uh, uh, listening to ex experts and sociologists who never ever spoke about care, now vindicating the power, the, the role of care and putting care in value. And so let, let, let's, I, I think that it's important that feminism vindicates that care and, the, and, the, and a broad concept of care 
is 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 is, is a one of the of the main of the main the pillars of, of of feminist politics. Okay, um, I would ask uh, someone else if they have any questions, comments, or else we can go directly and speak about the three topics that we uh, that we were proposing to actually dig a little deeper in. The proposal is to actually have a presentation on them, uh, split into smaller groups, and then go back to the plenary and, and share what we spoke about and, you know, uh, um, discuss, challenge, uh, interpolate, or however we can say to, to those concepts and the way that the, the authors presented uh, presented them and the proposals that, that they do. So I'm trying to make some time. If you have, can you please sh stop sharing the screen because I cannot see everybody. Okay, faces. sorry, because I, I had the, the Thank you. Okay. Makes uh, it's great to see actually faces. Thank you. So a um, couple of minutes for you all to, I don't know, any reactions? Any, but this is the same. Well, I've heard this so many times. This is not new, uh, but um, but this is necessary. But I don't know. Whatever you, whatever you can comment on is more than welcome. Alex. Um, hi. I I don't know if that's uh, if if it's the right moment for this question, but. Um, like we are part of this, um, or we were invited uh, today because, like Chris and also Flor and Angela, we are organizing for a conference. It should have been in September, and now it will be uh, hopefully next year on institutions and or like feminist perspectives on institutions. And we are working with many people that are organized mostly in parties because then they. Uh, go uh, into the institutions, and you were like focusing on the on the connection of the feminist potential in the municipalism groups, and also it says in the end of the publication it says like yeah it will be so far more difficult if we talk about parties or other like more traditional um, organ forms of organization, and I was just like. Mm, it would be very interesting from our perspective to see where do you see the problems and where do you think that's um, possible to um, like draw some conclusions out of it or something like that. Like where is it more close to each other and where is it not possible to make that transfer? I, I'm not sure if I was yeah no it's it's totally clear it's a it probably requires a very long debate right um and to see what is different and what is similar i think many things are similar many of these political platforms work as political parties but they are different in many in many senses as well um they are smaller they all live in the same city people can meet each other there's there's some differences that i think there are crucial to to in terms of the potential to do things differently um, and proximity so so yeah pro, so pro, proximity here is key uh, of course technology give gives you um, lots of possibilities but the fact that people can meet and can do things together by sharing spaces and and sharing their lives um, and then working as networks with other organizations, I think it changes some things. And that's why we think that it's, it's easier for a feminist project like this to, to enter uh, politics through the local level and through municipalist platforms. Although there's many other things that can be implemented in other, in other kinds of organizations and not, not only political parties, also like any kinds of social movements and any kinds of collectives. There's many things that we tackle in the report that can be applied to any kind of organization, actually. And I've been talking about this to artists in, in, some, in, in, in Eastern Europe, for instance, and, and they talk about their collectives and it seems many things resonate as well in their work. And I don't know, there's, there's many examples uh, and probably there's some things that cannot be implemented. Um, but in any case, there, 
I don't know, so the, the whole point of having these conversations is to, is to find those, uh, those, poten those, those possibilities and the potential for, for feminist politics to enter politics. Because otherwise, you could say, no, these are totally different and then maybe one of the conclusions should be, well, then feminism is, is doomed or something like that, or, or at least in this, this, this kind of project for feminism, like to have a deeper, um, a deeper uh, integration into politics. And I don't think that's the, I hope that's not the, the answer. So yeah, but it, 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 it certainly requires a very long conversation and very in practices of trial and error. So I don't know, I'm optimistic. I don't know about you, but. Okay, maybe you can leave the pessimism or the optimism for the plenary session after the breakout sessions. I would really love the authors to actually present the proposals that they have in terms of power leadership and non-violence. I would urge you to be short in this because we will have time to actually discuss further in the breakout sessions. So if you can take uh, three minutes each, it would be actually great. We cannot listen to you, Irene. Sorry. Uh, may I share the screen again? Because we have three slides with each, with each topic, so it will be super fast, promise. <laughs> okay, so far, that's it. Share. Okay, so let's start with power. Thank you, it's my turn. <laughs> Uh, okay, so one of the axes uh, we worked uh, during the report was uh, power and power relations. Uh, there is a more theori theoretical, uh, theoretical background about power and power relations that we have been focused on practices, but uh, we have this quote of Hannah Arendt uh, that this power is the human ability to not to act, not just to act, but to act in concert. It means uh, to act with others now. So uh, what we saw is that uh, feminist perspectives uh, criticize the idea of power as a, as a power over, as a domination concept. And uh, we want to shift in this conception of power uh, to a conception of uh, a power to achieve something, a power to do or a power um, to, to with others. Um, so this uh, traditional notion of power, uh, as I said, is based on domination and this patriarchal conception of, uh, of this exclusive uh, leadership uh, and the accumulation of power and, and some kind of loyalty and uncritical fidelity, as uh, we see in the next uh, slide. Uh, there is like three notions of power, like the power over, in the, okay, which is individualist, uh, based on domination and it's uh, the potestas, uh, but also we have the power to, the power to do without, with others. Uh, it means that the social relationship ap appears here uh, to empower oneself and empower others. Um, we also have the power with, which is a more uh, Italian uh, uh, theoretical concept based in the affidamento, which is the social relationship between women, the trust that we have in others, and, uh, and how, uh, uh, how we interest uh, ourselves. So, um, powers is not a resource. It's not, it is not some, something that someone has and, and someone gains. Uh, it's a relational character. So, feminist power is about to use this uh, relational, relational character uh, to change uh, social power structure uh, collectively. Uh, but uh, between power over and power to or with someone, uh, um, uh, power has uh, power as ability. Uh, not replace the concept of power as domination. It must uh, coexist together. So we have to think how uh, how are we going to to work with that. Uh, in the in the way of the directions uh, of feminist theory, uh, we find three like the inclusion. It's uh, there is a frame uh, already made. So we enter in this frame. Uh, there is a reversal way, which is uh, to propose. 
uh, the opposite the opposite frame and the other one is to displace uh, the previous frame uh, building a new dialectical uh, a, a new dialectic proposal or a new dialectical so uh, what we found with the feminist conception of power this power to and power with is that um, some elements are um, uh, next uh, uh, slide please <laughs> It's a cooperation and mutual support, the empowerment, not only individual, but also as a community, uh, and to have agency in, context, in the context of oppression. So which are the, the challenges we found in our report is uh, that we need um, to find ways to foster uh, this cooperation inside the, within our organizations. So what happens with this cooperation when, when it uh, acts in, in context of, of confrontation, sorry. Um, that means that if we stick to feminist methods, we are going to be a side of uh, decision making. Uh, this is going to affect to the way uh, the organization works, the people in the, in the organization works. Is, it also affects um, the way that we communicate, if we have tools to conflict resolution or not, and also how do we uh, alliance, uh, how, how we uh, have allies outside uh, our organization. Another challenge is uh, the time to address. We when we want to make a structural change, we usually uh, have this uh, excuse like, we, can, we have no time to afford it now. So we need uh, to, to develop these mechanisms to warranty and monitor the way we uh, work on, on cooperation to reverse power relations. <clears throat> and it can be from political discourses, not in a, in, in a confrontative way, uh, to make, uh, for example, a diplomacy group uh, to, to, and, and, not have the, and, and not to leave the diplomacy task for one person only, and also, uh, of course, uh, the political communication. Of course, we find also when, uh, when a, a cooperative way of uh, do politics uh, um, uh, confront with a competitive way, um, we have the, the, the question of, if we have the right to able, if the women uh, have uh, to have different uh, behavioral standards that men are unwilling to apply to themselves. So uh, should we be more cooperative, more nice, or more feminist than mm, our male partners? And that's a little bit the part of power. Thank you, Ale. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we think uh, leadership fits into the, into the discussion of feminism in politics. Um, so, um, I will go again to social role theory. Uh, traditionally, leadership has been associated to, um, to, to masculinity and, and, and seen as a male trait um, that, that is associated to agency, security, infallibility, strength, um, capacity to deal with, with stress, for instance, and speed. Um, and uh, this is... Uh, we think uh, intrinsically negative, um, and not simply because it's uh, it's um, something that uh, that is connected to to that is com more more common among men, and it, it is intrinsically negative because it's unstable. Uh, it it depends on just one person usually. If something happens to the, that person, that's a, that's a, a problem for the whole project. It's bo more vulnerable to attacks, so from the outside. Um, it's more prone to making mistakes because it doesn't rely on collective in intelligence. It is intrinsically undemocratic because it's not, it doesn't share the power to, to decide uh, with others. And it's bad for the leader itself, uh, himself or herself, because it takes, um, it means a lot of responsibility, a lot of visibility. They have to take a lot of shit, uh, usually like publicly and so on. So it's, um, yeah, it's a problem. So um, we we wanted to share this quote from Karen Tepp, 
uh, she's one of the interviewees in the in the report where she so you can read it um uh, well you can I, I will give you time to read it it's probably faster So there's many elements arising here uh, about how an alternative vision of leadership would look like. Uh, and I will talk about, um, about those elements in a second. I just wanted to, to also add that it is necessary to think about a, a feminist way of leading because um, adapting to that uh, traditional way of, of understanding leadership also has a backlash effect uh, on non-privileged people and and we also uh, we're also subjected to the imposter syndrome as, as you um, of course know so there's a need to find an alternative view of leadership that is connected to to some of the traits that karen is mentioning here so if you don't if you want to move to the next slide um so we think leadership should be a feminist way of understanding leadership is connected to care uh, and to interdependence and care of care of relations and and a leader is someone who um, takes care uh, of the relationships that are built uh, around um, her person and facilitates uh, those relationships to to flourish um, it's a person like that can make mistakes and, and needs to trust others in order to in in order to lead and it also um leads based on or horizontal relationships or or at least as horizontal as possible and not in does it is not um in a position of of um, vertical relationship to the next to the other people and i wanted to share this this little thing here about um how leadership also depends on and the, on the diagnosis um we make of problems and masculine or traditional leadership usually understands problems as technical problems and there are some technical problems in our lives like i don't know i need someone to fix my oven uh, but usually political problems are not like this and uh, there's not one right answer and um, so in in um, technical problems the diagnosis and solution are offered by the leader who is the expert and obedience is the result because there's one right answer and this is the person that knows best so if we think that problems are like this then traditional leadership is okay but if we have are facing adaptive problems this is a word that um is, is a way of understanding uh a vocabulary that is used in in some discussions about leadership um then like um ronald hayfetz for instance is, is is a person who has been working around this um then where there's no right answer and there's disagreement then the diagnosis needs to be done by those who are affected by the problem themselves there's disagreement about the solution and the the key is to have a leader that can mobilize um people to find a solution together and there's many examples of people who can who have led uh, like that in history and we think a feminist view of leadership is more connected to that so keeping in mind how we understand problems and, and challenges is also key to to, if, to think about how we want to to lead as a consequence and yeah and then in the in the working in the group later we we will discuss some some more practical things uh, like for instance I don't know rotation or mapping of experts uh, teamwork transfer of knowledge many uh, communication many there's many ideas that we have uh, to implement that but but I would like to to I don't know to to stay with that that idea of like how we understand problems and what we need to do to deal with them Okay, and last but not least, uh, there I go, uh, with violence. Uh, well, I, we also added this, this, this quote uh, from Bell Hooks. A 
And of course, I, I wouldn't say that uh, violence is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an issue that is uh, somehow hidden or, or less discussed as, as power or leadership, as, as, my, as Alejandra and, and Laura have explained. I think that violence, and, specific, and especially patriarchal violence, is nowadays in the, in the core of uh, feminist vindications around the world. So I think it's, a, it's an issue that it's, it's, it's obvious and, and, that, and that it's in all the feminist agendas. However, uh, we, we had a lot of different, you know, uh, uh, realms and, 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 and issues to tackle uh, within uh, when speaking about non-violence because uh, there's the establishment of anti-violence movements and questioning the existing, the existing forms of conflict resolution and the management of uh, you know interpersonal relations are key issues in feminist politics but uh, we, we didn't want to focus on at least, at least now in this session we don't want to focus on, on let's say the, the, the external the, the ad extra uh, uh, problems that uh, feminists are facing uh, when, when, when working towards violence against women and, and um, or broadening the, the focus on patriarchal violence. But we wanted to focus on uh, how these organiz this feminist organizations that we have been re researching uh, are, uh, are addressing the problem of violence within the organizations. And first of all, we we discussed and, 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 and we thought that it was important to call it by its name and, 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 to, and to recognize that, left, that, that uh, violence exists within our organizations and that they, our organizations are not violence-free spaces. So it is important to, to have a common ground, to, to have a clear definition of, of what do we all understand as violence and which kinds of violence do we understand that uh, we have to, to, to work on. Why? Because, uh, and we had a very interesting debate that, uh, that uh, we will develop later in the, in the, in the, in the other session, but uh, we have a very interesting debate on how, one, once we have, we, have, we have defined that violence and what it is, how do we want to transform it? it that, does does, does these this, uh, this forms of violence have a potential to be, to be worked and transformed, or can just can't be tolerated and thus they have to be erased from these movements. And how do we do that? And, and one, of, one of the ways that feminization of politics uh, proposed uh, to, to tackle, to address this, this, this conflict is uh, working on prevention from the focus on prevention by identifying, as I said, what is violence, which violence can be tolerated, let's say so, in, in, in a way of transforming and, and, and using it as a, as a learning tool and which ones not and how to, can we build uh, procedure, procedures and protocols together to do so. And, the, and, and, and I know it's a very different, I, I mean, it's a very difficult debate and, 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 and it implies and, 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 and you have to, to have in mind the experiences of, of survivors to do so. And especially in this, you know, in this local level where, where with the role of our closest communities uh, when, when, when trying to survive violence. And, and, and a, third, a third point is how to act. When we generate this, these protocols, can we, can feminization of politics uh, propose a different way of approaching the ways of, uh, of eradicating violence without a punitive, of, with not just a punitive approach, but with different approach, both for victims and for perpetrators? So that's basically the three, the three points that we think that are interesting to work with a feminist point of, point of view. Great, thanks. So I think that uh, wow a lot of info here and this is taking some flesh i think that it's a moment to go to the breakout sessions and this the make pieces out of this and pull together and have the chance to chat with each of the authors that they will facilitate each of the sessions now uh, alexandra if you could please send us to the sessions those who didn't choose anything in the chest you were uh, randomly randomly assigned to one of them so i hope that you enjoy whatever you whatever you will be there um, you know that this automatically closes so in 30 minutes um, 30 minutes angela uh, we will uh 25, 30 minutes, but yeah, 30 minutes, I think you will have a pop-up window saying, yeah, this will close. So we will be back in, in 30 minutes. Um, remember, please, to choose someone to actually, yeah, Senia.
Yes, everybody can go wherever you want. We will wait for you in the in the breakout sessions. Okay, see you later. See you.